welcome to the Bill Cartwright Show with our special guest, our new assistant coach, Kyle Bankhead. Kyle, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me on. <laughs> I'm excited to be here. Yeah, this is going to be a great year. I'm really, uh, really looking forward to it. What I really want to do is to have everybody get to know you really quickly. So can you talk about where you grew up? And I want you to talk a little bit about mom and dad. Yeah, I, I grew up in a small town in Washington, kind of the southeast corner, uh, Walla Walla, Washington. So uh, which is actually turned into wine country up there in Washington. But it's the southeast corner. It's in a valley. Uh, just in the valley from near the Blue Mountains. Uh, it's a beautiful area, it's a city of about 30,000. Um, lived, lived there my entire childhood from uh, the time I went was born to the time I went to college at 18. So uh, my dad was actually, my dad was in the Navy and he also worked for the government and just a government job there in Walla Walla at a place called Bonneville Power Administration. He just did some management stuff there. Um, my mom was an administrative assistant at the local college, uh, at Whitman College in the athletic department, which was actually a great perk for me. It allowed me to get in the gym anytime I wanted. So um, and now my, my parents have been unbelievable supporters of my career and my basketball playing days and now my coaching career. Hopefully they'll be down here in the near future to watch us play. But uh, they live full time in Spokane now. So they're and when, when it's the summer and all of that, they're they're in Spokane. And during the winter, a lot of times they're they're wherever I'm at watching us play. So uh, they're they're my dad's a basketball junkie and my mom's a great supporter. And she likes to travel a little bit and get the warmer weather. So. Awesome. Awesome. And can you talk about what kind of kid were you? This sounds like you were a sports kid growing up in I, high school. I was. What kind of kid? Yeah, I was. I, I I was one of the guys that, you know, my parents wanted me to play multiple sports. I think that's kind of the way my dad was raised. You played, you know, things have changed a lot now where you're specialized, right? Back in the day, my dad, you know, my parents were trying to get me into everything. It started with soccer, like a lot of kids did that. And um, I, I tried football. Uh, I, I was backup quarterback in seventh grade, and that was about the end of my career in football. So I was, I was happy to watch it. And then I, I played basketball and baseball all the way through high school. So I, I enjoyed baseball. I was terrible at it. Um, I thought I, I thought I might have a career in baseball, but I ended up being very, very poor. <laughs> By the time I got to my senior year, I had put most of my efforts into being a basketball player. So I was definitely a sports kid, loved basketball, obviously. I uh, loved baseball and I enjoy watching football and I enjoy golfing, all that stuff. Uh, um, yeah, I, I enjoy pretty much everything, but uh, obviously basketball is the, the direction I took. You know, when I was a kid, I was really mentored by my cousin who was three years older. And of course, I had a great high school coach. Who kind of mentored you in high school? Um, my dad. I mean, my dad was a big part of it. Um, I had a great high school coach by the name of Jim Thacker. We he, he is a long time. His dad was a legend in Spokane. Uh, he was a long time coach there at Walla Walla High School. Still stay in touch with him. Uh, I, I would say those two guys. I mean, I had a great coaching staff in high school. My dad was very involved, always supportive. Uh, if I needed a rebounder, he'd always do that stuff. I never really had a workout guy. That was something that's come along. I feel like it's come along here in the last 10 years. You know, that was never a thing back in the day. It was just grab a ball and go work out by yourself or, um, go with one of your teammates. So, uh, but from from a basketball perspective, I, I spent a lot of time with my dad on the court. And you know, after every high school game, uh, my mom was an unbelievable woman. She would sit during every high school game and just film every high school game. So, a lot of times, home games, me and my dad would actually go back to the house and watch the game together and kind of analyze the game and talk about it and what I could have done better and all that stuff. So, uh, he was a big part of it, and I, I was I was blessed. I very fortunate in my career, my playing career, that I had great coaches, not just in high school, but in college. So, Did you have good high school teams? Really good high school team. My, my high school team won the big school state championship in 1999. So we were, we were a very veteran group. I think we had nine seniors on that team. We, um, we had nobody over 6'3". So for big school, high school, that was – that was hard to deal with. We we, yeah. we were overmatched in every game. We we shot a lot of threes. 
kind of like our USF team. We shot a lot of threes and a lot of layups. We were a very good cutting team and we shot the piss out of it. So we, we had a really good team. We had a veteran group. We had tough kids, kind of like everything you'd want to have on your team. It was just a great group of guys, guys I'd grown up with, and it all kind of came together and uh, won a state championship. So it was, I was very fortunate. And on, honestly, still to this day, that was my best basketball moment was winning the state championship with the guys I grew up with. So as your senior year, uh, what are you thinking? Uh, are you getting a lot of scholarship offers or what are you thinking about for college? I had zero. I, I, I had no scholarship offers. And, you know, I've, I've told this story a lot. It was, I didn't play AAU. I wasn't on like the circuit. I wasn't out in front of coaches. Um, I didn't really know how it worked. My family didn't know how it worked. Um, my mom, God bless her. She literally, Bill, she literally sent out VHS tapes to every division one school in the country. So, and I, I got like three or four phone calls off that. And I'm talking about the, the phone calls were Prairie View a and Jackson State, and South Alabama, which I, you know, I've never been in that part of the country, anything like that. So, uh, and they, they, it was one phone call and that was it. Um, I didn't have any division two scholarships. Um, the local college in Walla Walla wanted me a couple local junior colleges wanted me. I, I didn't have anything, um, which was crazy. I mean, uh, not, I was all state. I was MVP of the state tournament. Like our team won the state championship. Like I, I don't know what else I could do. And I got no scholarship offer. So it was a, it was, it was a hard, hard moment. I didn't know what to do. Um, I went to team camp with my high school at Gonzaga every single year for four years. Um, and by when I was going into my senior year, our team was really good and we were, we were the champions of the team camp. So anyway, the, the Gonzaga coaches would always be out watching kids play and watching teams play and, uh, lucky enough, I did. I caught Coach Greer's eye a little bit, and it, it eventually they asked me to walk on. So that was my that was my only Division One option. Um, if I didn't have that, I was probably just going to go to Washington State and just try and show up for walk on tryouts and see if I can make the team. Um, that's really what it broke down to. But I was, you know, what everything happens for a reason. Um, I ended up at Gonzaga as a walk on, and if it would have if it would have gone another direction, I could have ended up in a, in a bad situation. So I was very fortunate. My parents, I don't come from a lot of money, but my parents were, were doing well enough. They were, they were, they were able to send me to college and help me pay for college. So um, while I was a walk on at Gonzaga, so I was very fortunate in that regard. So talk about when you got there, talk about your first practice. Was that, did that go well or what did you think? No, I was, I was awful. Like it was, uh, and you know, that, you know, the year I got there, they had just come off the elite eight and they had uh it was their first major run and I'd show up and they were a veteran crew. They were really good. And I, uh, you know, I, I told this story to our team a little bit. I, I would, there's a bench that sits outside the McCarthy center there. And I would just go out there and cry. Like, I didn't think I was good enough. I, I mean, I was just getting destroyed. I felt like I was the worst player in practice. Um, the game was moving so fast. The guys were so much bigger and stronger. Uh, I didn't know what I had gotten myself into. And, you know, you know how it is. It's, it's, I felt like I, I, I was failing. And that's a hard thing to accept because um, we all have egos. We all think you know, and that, that was hard. I was failing. And, I know for a fact the first two weeks of practice, I was the worst guy on the floor. I I was known as a shooter. I couldn't make a shot. The game was too fast. I couldn't guard anybody. They were all bigger and stronger than me. It was it was rough. I mean, really rough. So, um, but I, I do think from this standpoint, it's it's helped me now because I I know I, that stuff's like stuck in my memory. So I know what it's like for young players to come into a program and how hard it is. And you know, you can't just if they're struggling, you can't just push them to the side and say they're not good enough. It takes time. Um, and, you know, I was back back then we started practice. And, you know, this October 15th was your start date. You just that's when you started practice and a week, a week later, you're scrimmaging uh, inner squad scrimmage. And then we did and that one. I didn't do very well. I remember this. And then two weeks, it was like a two week window where I was awful. And the second inner squad scrimmage. 
um, where I kind of maybe was finding my way a little bit. I ended up scoring 16 points in the second inter squad scrimmage. And honestly, from that moment on, I felt comfortable and I felt like I, the game slowed down and I was able to play at that level, but boy, the first couple of weeks were awful. I mean, awful and hard. Um, it, it's demoralizing. I understand that, but I was, you know, when I was a senior in high school, I averaged almost 30, 39 points a game. My freshman year, I averaged 12. And it was, it was really, um, I had to have a self-examination um, when I needed to do to be a, um, a college player. So I understand. So it took you really probably that year to get acclimated. Can you talk about what you feel like made you better and what made Gonzaga that team really good? Was it just the fact that they were competitive or they good players, but what makes them good? Well, uh, you, you know, that, that first year I red, red shirted and to this day, that was the best thing that could ever happen to me. It allowed you to, take that year, not stress about playing time and just focus on getting better. Um, so that from, from my, my seat, that was, that was probably the most important thing for me. And I wasn't developed enough to play. I, I would have never touched the floor. So it was best thing for me. Um, I think what made those teams, those early teams good was they, they, the, the staff up there, I thought did an unbelievable job recruiting. They weren't getting necessarily four star kids. They did an unbelievable job of evaluating the right type of kids, kind of the blue collar kids that were about winning, were about team. And I think that stuff you see now across college, across college athletics about the camaraderie, the bench, the, you know, everybody being as tight as possible. I think they were almost a little bit ahead of the game in that they were, we were very connected and we were all about the right things. And again, I thought they did an unbelievable job of recruiting kids that were about that so like everybody in the program they were about winning so they would do anything they could to win and they didn't accept losing and if you were somebody that didn't fall in line with that then you would just disappear like uh, you know it's, it's it's crazy it's you were getting on board with that or you were not going to be there um and that was that's a big part of it and that that might not be the most glamorous answer but i i truly feel like that's the thing those guys work the right way they acted the right way. They were together. And I think they were a little bit ahead of the game from a national standpoint of just being those type of guys and recruiting those type of guys. So what was your best year at Gonzaga? Uh, my, my senior year. I mean, I felt like that was – we ended up being top three in the country. We finished the year I, I – mean, whatever poll – ends at the end of the regular season. We were ranked third in the country. We were behind Stanford and St. Joe's, and those two teams were both undefeated the entire regular season. They were our, actually our only two losses during the year. So uh, we lost to St. St. Joe's opening night. That was when they had Jameer Nelson, Delonte West, unbelievable yeah. team. Their, their only loss of the season that year, I think, was in the Elite Eight. So, um, And then we, we lost to Stanford here, actually played in the, the, the old – uh, what Oracle is it? Oracle, the, the one in Oakland over there. We played them over there and ended up losing to them early in the season. And then uh, we didn't lose to the NCAA until the NCAA tournament. So that was a great year for me. Obviously, a culmination. Um, I, I knew I wasn't going to be an NBA player. Uh, I thought that was a special year just from that fact. Um, you know, being with the guys, a lot of those guys that I've been with for four years, we had a veteran crew. Um, just, just fortunate. Now, I was, I was pretty lucky. Then the starter on that team, and you know, I, I don't know if if I could have held a crystal ball and or chose what I could have done in college. I think I, I, from what I ended up doing, that I would have chose that. You know, it was pretty special, special place, special career, and uh, my senior year was pretty, pretty fun. You know, I still have great teammates from when I was at USF. Give me two guys that you still talk to today yeah I, I mean all those guys I mean the main ones probably are Richard Fox who I just poked a little fun at on Twitter uh yesterday and then uh Corey Violet I was there four years with him Richard was my roommate um Blake Step I was very close with Blake I still think he was an NBA player he had a degenerative knees I stay in touch with him and one he's one of those guys that's just good at everything every sport he tries 
um, Dan Dick I was close with, uh, I was in his wedding. So like I, there, there's numerous guys and like, it's one of those things that those guys are probably the guys I'm closest with that I played with. Um, but it's one of those things. And I imagine you're the same way. When I go back up there, there's so many guys that are still up there, um, that played there. And when you see them, it's like, everything's okay. Like you're all just really good friends still. So it's just, sometimes you lose touch just with time and work and family and all that stuff. But uh, very close with a lot of them. I just don't do not do a good enough job reaching out as much as I should. And the other guy, I would say, is Stephen Gentry. He was actually an assistant up there right now. We were, he was like my little brother in college. So, fun guy. Awesome. Awesome. So, it's your senior year. Are you going to graduate? So, what are you thinking? I, want, I wanted to go play professionally. And I, I, I played four months professionally in Germany. Um, and that was the end of my professional career. I it's so funny. I had a really rough experience in those four months. I was uh, homesick. Um, there, there were some issues within the, in the league. I, it was a small town. I didn't know what to expect. I, it, it was a rough four months. Uh, so I went over, I played professionally. It was actually in the top league in Germany. Uh, and we were on, I was on the worst team. So um, we, we struggled. You know, I'd been in a program that hadn't we don't we didn't lose very often so now I'm losing every game and we're just getting destroyed by 30 points I mean that was really hard for me um they cut me after four months and I kind of traveled around a little bit I actually lived with uh my buddy was playing in Italy Corey Violet was playing in Italy I went and lived with him for a month you know just spent some time over there and, and enjoyed that a little bit and came back actually took a half a year off after that I just was burnt out and then I got into coaching after that as a as a volunteer up there at Gonzaga so it's that was I knew I wanted to get into coaching I just didn't know when that would be I wanted to see if I could do some sort of professional career uh and it just it didn't work out I mean I, I don't think I was ever a guy that was going to make a ton of money uh, but I wanted to see if I could make a little career out of it and it just didn't work out so talk about your first coaching job you said to you Went back to Gonzaga, you volunteer. So what happened after that? So I went and went back, did two years there. Um, and then Bill Greer uh, ended up getting the head coaching job at the University of San Diego. And Coach Greer was the guy that had helped me get to Gonzaga, recruited me, um, and was the guy that does. And then he offered me a job there at San Diego with him. So I went down there with him, and I would say – it was a bit of a wild ride. Um, you know, I, I think we got down there and um, our first year, we're in the second round of the NCAA tournament. You know, it was a wow. great, yeah, great year. A lot of people don't realize that we went down there. Um, we ended up finishing third in the West Coast Conference that year behind Gonzaga and St. Mary's. And we ended up beating St. Mary's in the semifinals and played Gonzaga in the championship game and beat them to go to the NCAA tournament. And we played UConn in the first round. We uh, beat UConn at the buzzer. We had a kid, she had a step back jump shot, an unbelievable shot um, with 1.2 seconds left to beat them. So we're in the second round. We end up losing to Courtney Lee in Western Kentucky in the second round. Like, and we were up with six minutes to go. I mean, we were borderline sweet 16. It was, so we went from that high to um, some issues within the program. Um, one of the players actually got in major trouble and one of the former or assistance before we got there got in big trouble um, with some point shaving stuff. So we had nothing to do with our staff, but it was so our program was all over the map. I think we got let go after eight years there at San Diego. I thought we ended up getting good kids in there and, and the right type of kids and kids that were enjoyable to coach. And you know, we ended up getting fifth in a in a rough, tough West Coast conference and got let go. And then had to move on. So that that's a part of the profession. It was not easy, but I think you learn a lot going through those experiences. Talk about your next job and why did that happen? After, uh, after USD? Yes. Yeah. So I actually ended up going to a place called Sunrise Christian Academy. It was, I mean, it, you know, you, you've coached. And where, where is that? Sunrise Christian that. Academy is in Wichita, Kansas. So I had recruited a kid from Sunrise Christian to San Diego. Um, they have a post-grad program and they have a high school program. Well, the high school coach 
at Sunrise Christian Academy, he got hired at Wichita State as an assistant coach. And the post-grad coach took over the high school coach, the high school program. So the post-grad was open and I had nothing. I, I got one interview for an assistant job. It was a hard time in my life. And it got to be, I had no job. And it was like August, like 12th, something like that. And um, the guys at Sunrise Christian called me and asked if I'd be interested. And I said, yes, of course, because I had nothing going on. And I went out there and I took the job and it was, um, it was like a volunteer job from a financial standpoint. I mean, it was, it was no money. Um, but I also, it was one of the most enjoyable experiences of my life. I, I really enjoyed it. I liked coaching that age, the 18 to 19 year old kids. Like that's a big development stage for them. Yeah. A lot of times if you're just coaching post-grad, they, they have something they really need to work on with us personally, academically, game wise, some of them need to develop, but there's, there's just a strange mix of kids and, I really enjoyed it. I tell people all the time, if I was, if it was a six figure job, I'd probably still be there. You know, I really enjoyed it. Got to run my own program. Got to learn a lot being a head coach. Uh, did that for two years. Um, I liked Wichita, Kansas. It's a good city, very good people. Uh, that program is the high school program. Now is a top three program in the country every year. So uh, it, it was a great experience. Still stay in touch with those guys and get out there and, and try and recruit their guys every year as well. So you took a, took another step, and why did that happen, or how did it happen? Uh, so after Sunrise Christian, yes, yeah. So I, uh, like I said, I if I could have stayed there for my career, I would have. Uh, but financially, I needed to get back into Division One, and I do have aspirations of um, being a head coach at the Division One level. So I, I I wanted to get back in the Division One level. I ended up getting hired. At, UNCG, which is University of North Carolina at Greensboro. And it was a very good program. They had just come off a great year. They had lost in the championship game to East Tennessee State. Very good program. I thought uh, Coach Miller out there was a up and coming coach. I thought it would be helpful to progress my career. I'd learn, you know, be around winning people. And I also knew Mike Roberts on that staff really well. So I ended up getting offered that job, went out there, was there for four years. We had a great run while I was there. And we, we had two NCAA tournaments. We had a COVID year and we were the number one seed in the NIT. So we had, we had I think we won 107 games in my four years there, which is a pretty incredible number when you think about it. Uh, with Two NCAA tournaments and we actually, uh, we, Unfortunately, we had we had a couple of close games in the NCAA tournaments, but didn't win a didn't win a game. But overall, good experience. Great kids out there. Learned learned a lot. And yeah, so then then I had to move on after that. <laughs> so so talk about how you ended up at USF. Yeah, um, r randomly. Um, I think there's a lot of that in this profession. Just. You don't really know where your life is going a lot of times. And uh, when I when I left UNCG, I didn't know where my life was going. Um, I was kind of stuck in a rough predicament, to be honest. And then uh, I ended up getting a phone call from Brett Tanner, who's the head coach at Abilene Christian. He had just gotten that job. Um, I didn't know him, but we, we had communicated before, but I didn't really know him. I, I was kind of shocked by the phone call. I ended up. Long story short, he ended up hiring me at Abilene Christian. Had a fabulous time out there. I stay in touch with those guys all the time. Uh, I'm pulling for those guys. Like I, I enjoyed my experience at Abilene Christian uh, immensely, and it was great. Uh, it was, I'd say, the only issue. It was a long ways away from home at the time, um, and I didn't know anybody out there. But like I got to know those guys, and it was a great experience. So. Um, and, and you know what? I had, I had gone through some things. The, the, the breakup at UNCG was hard for me. Um, it was a rough experience. And those guys took me in and I went down and I enjoyed my enjoyed my experience there. Had really no intentions of leaving, to be honest. I We finished our season. We won 25 games at Abilene Christian. We had a great year. We lost in the championship game in the WAC to New Mexico State. 
Um, and, you know, a lot of times if you're really searching, you're going to go to the final four and you're going to try and mingle and hear what jobs are open and all that. And I didn't, I told myself, I'm not going to go through that this year. I'm just, I'm happy. I'm just going to enjoy my weekend instead of going to the final four and didn't go. And, uh, wasn't really searching for anything. So I obviously saw what happened at USF with coach golden going to Florida. When I saw CG got the job, I, all I did was text him congratulations, you know, really happy for you. Like I know what it's like to be a long time assistant. Like he finally got a shot and deservedly. So, um, that was all I texted him. And he, you know, I think he texted me back. He's like, well, you know, let's connect in these next couple of weeks. I'm like, yeah, you know, whenever, whenever, man, you know, I'm happy to talk, whatever. Didn't, didn't hear from him for a little bit. And then kind of a roundabout way, I, long story short, he called me on a Thursday, I think it was, and kind of went through the details and asked if I'd be interested. And I said, absolutely. You know, and um, it was hard to say goodbye to Abilene Christian. And he, he ended up offering me the job pretty much after one phone call. I mean, we've known each other um, and I've always got along really well. I, I didn't, when I saw him got the job, get the job here at USF, I had no intentions or thoughts that I would be moving to San Francisco and being on staff here. That was, I've kind of taken myself out of that a little bit from trying to chase jobs and all that. I was just happy for CG to get the opportunity. Um, and I was fortunate that he called me and offered me the job and here I am. And uh, I've enjoyed every moment I've been here. So talk about your first impressions when you got here and then talk about, talk about the team. My first, what, what, when I got here? Your first impressions of, of the oh. school city. Well, I, I've known, obviously, this is my, as a player and coach, this is my 16th year in the, in the West Coast Conference. So I obviously knew a lot about USF and tradition and all that. Um, I played in this gym. Uh, I know it's a great shooting gym. I know the school's beautiful. I know the city has a lot to offer. The school has a lot to offer. Um, so my first impressions were, I don't know. I mean, they, they were great. I, I love this gym. I mean, I scored my career high in this gym. So I love that. I, I love So I, I uh, like the gym. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's, to be honest, that's all I really care about. I, I, I like, I like being in the gym with the guys and I, I love being around the staff. I think coach Duncan, who I, I was getting to know at the time, he's been phenomenal. Mike Plank is, I mean, you can't go a day without him giving me some crap and getting a good laugh out of it. Like he's hilarious, great people. CG treats people the way um, I, I would like to think I treat people. So I think he, he's a he's a great dude. Um, and it goes down the line. Benny McGee, Ralphie Ferrari, Jack Ridquist, Garrett Furbiashi, like all these guys, they're, they're great guys. And, and honestly, I could work any, but anywhere if I'm around the right people. Um, I'm happy. So impressions, it was really about the people more than maybe the school. I know the school is beautiful. I know the tradition, all that. Um, and then the team, the team has been great. Obviously they, they had a lot of success last year. We would love to keep that going. Um, they, they've been great. They welcomed me. Sometimes that can be hard. you got new coaches coming in, building those relationships, but they've been very welcoming. I've enjoyed being around them. I think we have a lot of talent. I think we can do a lot of great things this year. Um, just got to continue to mold them. But uh, first impressions have been phenomenal, and I couldn't be happier being here. Do you have one or two guys who maybe surprised you, who are maybe uh, a little better than you thought? Yeah, I, I think you always look at, you know, I, I'm, I'll probably start with those, the two small guards that we have, that, that Ty Roberts and Khalil Shabazz. I mean, um wasn't exactly sure. Sometimes you, you, you get, I don't know, you, people put, put you in a little, what's the right word? They have their opinion of you being a small guard. And I think those guys, from a toughness standpoint, from their ability to score, be great teammates, all that stuff, I think they're phenomenal players. And I wasn't 100% sure what we were getting or what I was going to be around with those guys, but I think they've been – phenomenal from working together, playing together, being great teammates, all that stuff. I, I think they're phenomenal. Um, so I, I'd probably start with those two guys. I've been really impressed. And I, the other guy would be Julian Richwain. Maybe he, he's, I think he's got more to his game. I think you look at him and you think hey, he's just a shooter. I think he's got more to his game than that. I think he can play off the bounce. I think he's a good defender, all that stuff. So 
No, I, I think there's a lot of guys that have impressed me. Um, if you want me to throw names out, those would be maybe the three. Nice, nice. Well, I'm not going to ask you where you, um, you think we could finish this year. Um, you know, and I'm always just being a, um, a fan more than anything else. I'm always concerned about our scheduling. Our, our scheduling actually looks pretty good. What do you think? Yeah, our schedule is, uh, I'll tell you what, that's one thing that got dropped on me when I got here. So it was a scheduling standpoint. Scheduling is really difficult, especially, you know, we only play 16 league games. We need to schedule 15 uh, non-conference games. So it's a lot. It's a lot of work. And the fact that we've been good, uh, there's a lot of people that don't want to play us. So it's it's a it's hard to put the puzzle together. Um, it's a you know I work on it daily to be honest. Uh, but I like our schedule. I think I think it's built the way we want to want to put it together. Obviously, this program's been very analytical with the way they do things. Scheduling is a big part of that. Um, the way we go about our business in these games is a part of that. Um, but I, I think we have some serious challenges coming up. And I think our guys, I'm sure our guys will be ready, but starting out, um, obviously with Texas Southern on Monday, that's always opening game. You never know what you're going to get. You see scores right. across the country with like Louisville losing to a non-one. Like, I mean, there's, it's hard. It doesn't matter what the name is on the other team. It, it, getting out there in front of fans and all that stuff, it's hard. So we're, we're excited for that challenge, but I think the ones that people will be circling on um, on their calendars are probably, you know, the at Fresno. Um, we got the Chase Center game against Utah State. We're in Kansas City, where we play uh, <clears throat> North Iowa, open with Northern Iowa, and then play play hopefully the winner of uh, Wichita State, the Grand Canyon, and we fly out to Davidson at UNLV. Then we got Arizona State at home. I mean, those are those are high level games. So it'll be interesting. I'd imagine from a fan's perspective, those are the ones that are probably circled. Hey, when can we ever get back to Chicago? Why can't we play DePaul? Why can't we play Loyola? Why can't we play St. John? Let's go to New York. Let's, have, let's, let's go to Georgetown. <laughs> are those guys that scared of us? Yeah, I have talked to uh, some of the guys in Chicago for sure. Um, New York. I don't think I've made a phone call out to New York, but I will work on that. I'll work on that for you so you can come out and hang out a little bit. But no, I've tried UIC, uh, tried Loyola Chicago again. We've talked about it. Uh, it. It's just hard. It's it's there's there's more to just scheduling. Even if I call somebody and they say they want to play, a lot of times the dates don't match up, and, and it makes it more difficult. But it, it's I will keep trying. I think one thing CG likes to do is he likes to take the team to nice cities and all that stuff. So. We'll see if we can get to Chicago. Hey, Kyle, talk about your family a little bit. My family. I, I'm, I'm a, I am I'm don't have a wife. I don't have a kids, any kids. Uh, my sister lives in London, um, and she's, she's my only sibling. Uh, she's a little bit older than me. She does really well. She works for American Express. But um, that, that's really about it. I'm fortunate. I am seeing somebody that I'm – extremely happy with so hopefully we'll see how that progresses but no family <laughs> no immediate Sorry. family of my own and then uh yeah uh my parents are obviously in Spokane as I mentioned earlier awesome awesome well Kyle thank you so much for being on um I've had a chance to watch you guys practice uh, you guys are doing a great job and I'm looking forward to the season I'm certainly everybody's going to be very pleased I think with this season so I'm really looking forward to it yeah, I appreciate it. We love having you around. So, and thanks, thanks for having me on the show.